Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll take a look at how to transform multiple layers simultaneously using Corel Painter X3. Transforming multiple layers is a feature that's new to Corel Painter, and in earlier versions of Painter, you had to transform layers individually or export to Photoshop and do your transformations there. But in Painter X3, it's quite easy to transform multiple layers now, which will save you a lot of time when you're creating multi-layered artwork. So I like to use a lot of layers, not everybody does, but you can see here I've got this group of layers called person, and if I turn the layers on and off, you can see on my little character here, each component, each overlapping component, or most of the overlapping components, are on their own layers. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why did I do this? Well, let's say, for instance, I want to make a change to this character here. Uh, maybe I want to rotate the hand, this hand here. Well, if I just draw this on one single layer, I'll have to erase this hand and redraw it. There's really no other way uh, besides transforming it on its own layer to change the hand without having to redraw it. So what I mean by transform is I'm going to activate the free transform tool, which will treat this layer like it's you know maybe a piece of paper that's cut out or something, and you could take it and you could turn it and flip it, and you could even stretch it out and make it bigger or smaller. So let's say we want to rotate the hand. I'm going to choose the rotate option here, and this little center target represents where the hand will rotate from. Let's just drag this and move it a little bit down to here, and that will be where we'll be rotating from now. And now you can see I can make this person here wave if I want to. I can change the angle of the hand if I don't think it's right. And then I'll have to commit to this transformation, which means that I want to apply it. And let's say maybe I want to make the hand really, really big, like a baseball glove. Let's do a scale transformation. So I'm going to drag one of these corners and it's going to scale my hand. Now, it's going to be a problem because my hand's going to stretch and squash and it's going to detach from my arm and that's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm also going to hold alt. And shift and alt together will scale my hand up and down from the center point. And again, we can change this center point by moving this little target here down. So now I can move it here, and our hand will scale from this origin point a little more naturally. So then I can fine tune my hand quite easily. We could do the same thing with the head now, and we could try this with multiple layers. So let's, let's move our face and our head together. So I'm going to select both of these layers by holding shift on my keyboard and selecting these layers. If you want to select non-contiguous layers or layers that aren't touching each other, then you hold control and you click. And we'll just do the face and the head and I'm going to activate my free transform tool and I'm going to select rotate and I'm going to change my origin point by dragging this little target icon down to the neck area there. And I'm going to hover over this corner till I get this little rotation icon, and then I'm going to drag, and I can make the person move their head side to side if I want to change the position. I'm going to commit to the transformation by clicking this checkbox. And if I want to just move the head around and reposition it, I can do that. There's another way to get to your free transform tool, and we'll look at that. You can go to your edit menu, and you can choose transform, or you can choose free transform. Now, free transform is the same as going to it through this little shortcut here, which I find is a little bit quicker. If you want to scale things numerically, like let's say you want to make this little character here 200% bigger, you'll want to go to transform and then go to scale. And that'll give you a little option where you can uh, scale it up by a percentage. So we can make this person 200% bigger. And constraint aspect ratio, what that means is that will keep it from getting stretched because if you wanted to, you could scale it uh, more in one direction than the other and stretch the character out, but most of the time you're not going to want to do that. So we'll go to OK, and you can see we've scaled our little character here up 200%. Now I want to go over a few little bugs that I noticed in this feature. When I was working with this, uh, the first thing that I noticed is if I went to do a free transform and my grouped layers were expanded, Initially, it put a bounding box, this checkered line thing here. It put that around my whole canvas, and it, it 
didn't seem to work very well at first. Now it seems to be working fine. And I found that applying this transform with this group collapsed uh, versus this group expanded seemed to make a difference. So if you seem to be having some issues with groups, try closing your group like this and then try the transformation. See if it works a little bit better. If that doesn't work, try expanding it and then try your transformation. The other bug that I noticed was that after I applied some of these transformations, if I went to use a brush on a new layer and paint, uh, I wouldn't be able to add any paint. It's not happening now and it doesn't happen every time, but occasionally I'd be doing something like this where I'd go to start painting on the layer and nothing would show up and it wasn't because I had anything selected or locked. I looked at all that stuff. It just seemed to lock up for some reason and the way that I fixed that, if this is happening to you, I created a new canvas, doesn't matter what size, and then painted on it. That seemed to unlock the bug and I just closed that new canvas and when I went back to paint everything worked fine. So that seemed to be a little bit of a bug there. So you can see I really quickly uh, was able to change this artwork and modify it without having to redraw it or erase anything. And I think that's a good efficient way to work because you're working in a digital medium. You should be using these advantages of this medium which are things like transforming and thinking outside the box and not I'm doing things in such a destructive way. You really don't have to think of a lot of things as mistakes sometimes because a lot of things can just be tweaked just a little bit rather than just discarded altogether. So anyways, I hope that was helpful and explained a little bit more about how you can use this new transform multiple layers in Corel Painter X3. I think this is a really cool feature uh, to have. It makes things a lot easier when you're painting and working with multiple layers if you can uh, modify them all together. It lets you really experiment and try different things out. You know, you don't have to be so decisive and have an arm a certain way. You could uh, just draw it one way and then know that later on you can always change it. Or it could even be helpful for making animations because as you saw earlier I could take the hand and rotate it around and move the head and do all kinds of different things. So really opens the doors for a lot of possibilities and I recommend that you try it out with your work. If you have any questions about the transform multiple layers feature, feel free to comment on this video. And if you found this information useful, take a quick second to like this video and share it on YouTube. And that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.